Hello students, this is a new video from Professor's classes. I will be solving DSC Delhi School of Economics 2014 question paper. I have a different set and the pattern of structures are different. So this one are the questions. I would like you to take a note on the questions because DSC takes total four sets. Okay, so this uh, there are some arbitrary questions I have selected and I will be solving on the basis of the requests you have made. Okay. So here I have segmented the question as a stat, as like to start with the stat one. So here we have a question. Suppose that we classify households into one of the two states, that is rich and poor. Isn't we are all distinguished into this part, although our society has made many parts. Okay. So the probability of a particular generation being in either of the state depends only on the situation of their parents. So rich parents, poor parents, like that. If a parent is poor, the child is likely to be poor with a probability of 0.7. So I think if you you want to be into that 0.3 zone, and if a parent is rich today, the child is likely to be pure is 0.6. Okay, so there's a very high probability of being poor. So what is the probability that the great grandson of a poor man will be a poor man? So let's see how to solve this thing. So here. Mm, let x0 equal to that uh, an event where a poor man, a man, poor man, being a poor man, event of being a poor man, use a different color for this one, yeah, that will do good, being a poor man in present generation, and x1 in the next generation, x2 in that way. So the great, uh, they have asked around a great grandson. So simply that will be x3, great grandson, GGS. So we have asked to find that the probability of x3 given that x0 is there. The first great grandfather was a poor man. So here by applying the probabilistic law, we can write it. So it's a very fine example of probability that is x3 intersection x2 intersection x1 given x0 plus probability of x3 uh, intersection x2 intersection x1 complement given x0 plus in that way we will be going so again x3 intersection x2 complement intersection x1 intersection x0 and last this time x3 intersection so any two of the generation can be as well so that is the second case let me re explain the cases again so here none of the generation all of the generation are poor so there is the first generation is not poor and here the second one and here the first two generations were not poor. So here we can directly calculate uh, this portion as P of X3 given X2. Then P of X2 given X1. Then P of X2 given, no sorry, X1 given X0. So 3, 2, 2, 1, 1, 0. Similarly, we will be breaking into this part also x3 x2 p of x2 given x1 complement p of x1 complement given x0 and again as these events are independent so you can write it as this complement x2 complement given x1 and x1 given x0 this is the third and the last part also in that way we can write i'm just uh, putting it on a, on a dotted portion so just put the values so 0 0.7 0 0.7 0 0.7 in the first then 0 0.7 0 0.6 and 1 minus 0 0.7 so 0 0.3 in the second then 0 0.6, 0 0.3, 0 0.7, and in the last case, there will be 0 0.6, there will be 0 0.4, and 0 0.3. So just multiply, you will get 0 0.667. Hence, our correct option is option 
B. Although they have given 0 0.67, so it's very nearest value. So now we are proceeding uh, to the very next question. So consider an experiment of tossing two fair coins. Okay, two fair coins are tossed and let the event A be the head in the first and C be the head on the second coin. First and this is on the second coin. And the event D be both coins match and G be both are heads. So which of the following is false? Now C and D are statistically independent. A and G are statistically independent. So it's all about statistical independence. So here we need to proceed with intersection. Intersection leads to independence. Remember that P of A intersection D equal to P A into P D if they are independent and this zero if they are mutually exclusive. So in this particular case probability of A is half probability of G is one fourth you can directly say and probability of A intersection G is probability of G that is one fourth that is not equal to the product of P of A into P of G which is here 0 0.125 so ultimately A and G are not independent so obviously A and G are statistically independent so option B it will be acceptable under these question circumstances okay so every time you get a, to encounter a question like this all you have to do is to is calculate the portion okay next question is uh, let y be denote the number of heads obtained by three fair coins are tossed okay and the equation is z equal to this so all you have to do is expectation of this so expectation of z we need to find out 4 will be out of the portion and 5 into expectation of y square by following the basic rule and 4 will be there 5 into expectation of y and uh, here remember that y denotes the number of heads obtained when three fair coins are tossed so if we see that y follows a binomial distribution then the parameters are n equal to 3 and the probability is p equal to 0.5 so expectation of y is mean it is 3 into 0.5 so that is 1.5 and variance is NPQ, so which is 0.75. So here we can put the value variance of Y5 expectation of Y square. So here we can write 4 plus 5 into 0 0.75 That's 5 into 1.5 whole square. So just by calculating you can put the value and you can say option C is the correct option here. Now proceeding to next question. That is question number 4. In question number 4 we can see another question. Here they are talking about a similar incident. This is the variance of E of 4y square. Okay, and they denote the number of heads as well. So E of 4y square, let me write the function properly first. So here E of y can be rewritten as variance of z they asked us to find so that is 25 variance of y square and y square can be expressed as a formula so it is e of y to the power 4 minus e of y square and then a whole square so that's the structure so 25 expectation of y to the power 4 and this portion is simply 9 so 25 into 1 3 0 0.125 plus 16 with 0.3 multiplied by 3 the product and the probability for a 1 to 1 to 5 and then 81 0 0.125 this portion is 0 
So you can just put this value and you can calculate to be 187.5. So it's a very easy way of uh, solving the structure. The next question is again a probabilistic question we have. And in this question, they have asked us about the structural format. Okay, so I'm going to solve it. And uh, they have given EFG be the pairwise independent where probability of G is greater than zero and probability of E intersection F intersection G is so there is nothing common between E and G and F altogether. So let X C complement of C denote the complement of X. So then find the probability of E complement intersection F complement given G. So here we go. So here we will solve it probability of E complement intersection F complement given G as so we have E complement intersection F complement intersection G by P of G by the basic rule and then again applying the formula probability so G we have to subtract E complement G intersection G and F intersection G and G will be in the denominator then splitting it so 1 by this this is 1 P of E intersection and this is remember that these two are independent of each other so we end up with P E only and here we end up with P F so simply this can be written as 1 minus P of E complement minus P of F so we obviously we seek that option C is our correct answer so now proceeding to question number six of the DSE 2014 here we have a sequence based question it's a big sequence a n equal to 1 plus 1 by n whole to the power n plus 1 then the sequence is increasing first increasing then decreasing so what is the basic structure so here we have a n equal to 1 plus 1 by n whole to the power n plus 1. So we consider it as a monotonic transformation. So we just take log both sides because we have to take log when the power is the end of this. n plus 1 log of 1 plus 1 by n. So that can be written as n plus 1 minus log n. Okay. Now we have to just differentiate this with respect to dn ddn. So this will be very easy, this is n plus 1, log of this will be n plus 1 again and n plus 1 is minus by n. Okay, actually we have to apply relatively this portion, okay. This first part is done and then log of 1 plus 1 minus log of n with the derivative portion this is done so minus 1 by n plus log of n plus 1 minus log n and this portion is obviously less than 0 because this portion is positive and this is more than that so the this above inequality holds for fx equal to log x and is a strictly concave function and here we have f dash equals to log of f of x plus 1 minus f of x so this is a strictly concave formation so therefore this is a decreasing sequence okay so important that a sequence is very not that much easy to calculate when you have this kind of structure so it's a decreasing sequence and you can also just put some values but that is again confusing so in order to get a proper view to that you need to solve it okay now the rest of the questions will be done in my forthcoming videos and remember that if you need to take a look into my other questions and thing and i will be solving many questions and if you need the complete solution of the structure you just can go to this website this is my personal website here i solve a lot of questions and upload it as well and if you want to take our classes our classes is at kolkata and new delhi live classes 
and you can take the online classes where the complete solutions the package and everything and with my study materials which are available on amazon and flipkart will also be there okay hope to see you soon at the dsc and cracking the examination thank you for now have a very nice day